12 episodes we've done. <gasps> now we're going to talk about Deadwood Season 2. Look at that picture of Bullock. Just to mention, we're not going to do a sort of summary of the season because it's just, it's too labyrinthine <laughs> to even describe. It's yeah. Byzantinely plotted. It's so dense with sort of plot lines. And, and if you want to catch up on what all the plots are about, Watch our individual episode reviews. Oh, yeah. I mean, I'm sure anyone who's watching this has probably seen the show. If you haven't, go watch it, turn this off, and then come back, because we're not going to do like a summarise of what's happened. We're just going to get straight into reviewing it, because it, it, if we were to describe the events of each episode, or even just to give a brief overview, it would take about 20 minutes. <laughs> yeah. Because the show is just that dense at this point. The rest of our time we fucking have. Yes. So, in the first season reviews, I made some statements and then you oh, were saying, you know, oh, that's true or well, that's not true. So I thought I would revisit okay. that little, All right, little thing. Let's do a sex exercise right again. Right then, so, because some of them you said, oh, I've not seen enough yet. So, the first thing I said was, Ian McShane gives the best performance of all time <laughs> as Al Swearingen, and Al Swearingen is the best character in a TV show ever. Yes. Yes. 100% yes. Because before you said, oh, I'd have to see more, now do you think after 24 episodes that he Yes, knows, he is easy. Al, Al Swearingen has completely won me over. He's a part of my lexicon now. Lexicon. He's just like, um, he, yeah, he, when, when a character like enters like your subconscious... And you think, like, how would he react? Yeah. And you, you know he's doing something right. Ian McShane just gives just one of the best performances of all time. Yeah. It's just, it, it's awesome. Yeah. And w w when he gets his glee, he is sorely missed. Yes. And you realise what an impact Al has on this show. Yeah. Um, well, I'll get into it later. Yes. So that one is. I also said, and this was one where you said I'd have to watch more of it, Deadwood is the best show ever. <laughs> Do you think after season two, or do you think you'd have to see season three? I want to see season three. Yeah. But based on the first two seasons, I want to say one of the best. One of the best. Yeah. I need to watch season three just to conclude it. Yes, because if that's awful, that would bring it down. That would bring it down for me, yeah, yes. overall. Based on the first two seasons, I've not, certainly season two, I've not seen a season of TV of like such continued quality. Yes. You know, I've been watching Sopranos again recently. Yeah, which we'll get into eventually. Um, and season one, it's amazing, but it's got a couple episodes which are a bit like, Ugh. <laughs> yeah, like I watched episode Boca last night. Yeah, which is okay. I'm coming to the episode where Christopher is uh, going to get involved in the rap business. Yeah, that next. one's a bit rubbish. Um, I've not got to the one where uh, uh, we'll be going to Hollywood. But anyone's that involved Hollywood are a bit. That's true. Uh, anyone's that involved Hollywood. Anyway, whatever. Um, so yeah, sort of Sopranos, you know. There's a few episodes where we're like, oh, well... Yes. Deadwood? No. 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 Yeah. That is just incredible. And the, the, this season fixed my only problem that I had with season one. My which, only problem. Which was... Bullock. Bullock. Bullock okay. in season one, I think, is uh, ill-characterised. I get the idea that he's angry. Yeah. And, like, he's upset that there's so much injustice in the world. But I don't think the script writers quite know how, or I don't think David Milch knows how to project that. <laughs> yeah. And I don't think Timmy Ol Oliphant knows how to act it. No. Fixing season two. Well, I think what they do that's so brilliant with Bullock in season two is instead of just having him mad at the world, he has a profound self loathing. Yeah. Which is definitely it's the better. correct way to yeah. take the character. Yeah. Like, he's so angry at his own failings and the fact that he loves Alma and he can't love Mrs. Bullock. <laughs> it's fascinating. He's, he's like a Shakespearean tragedy character. <laughs> Instead of just being angry at everyone, he's just angry at himself. And it's a marriage of convenience. Exactly, he has to take out on everyone. That's fascinating. Yeah. It's not like just someone who's like, oh, why can't the world be fair? Uh, that's kind of what he can That's how he comes across in season one. Yes, he's like a child. In season yeah. two, he's like an adult. He's, he's, he's a three-dimensional character. Yes. So, were there any other statements? Sorry, hang on. Um, Deadwood has the best cast ever. And the best characters. So, like, the best oh. ensemble. I would say 100% just for Charlie Utter. <laughs> Charlie Utter. Utter Freights. Utter Freight. Yes. Um, De Deadwood certainly has... Um, in terms of like other side characters... Yeah. Um, well, that's what it all is. There's no real lead. Yeah, there's no yeah. lead, yeah. Um, there's definitely, definitely some characters which are going to come across and we're going to be above others, you know. Yeah. I'm always going to prefer Al 
uh, to like, I don't know, uh, the guy that, that ends up marrying Alva. Oh, Ellsworth. Ellsworth. Ellsworth's a great character, but I'm always yeah. going to prefer Al to Ellsworth because Al's a more interesting character. Yeah. Um, so I, I, I would say it's definitely one of the best ensemble. Yeah. Up there with um, Game of Thrones. Yeah. <laughs> I think it beats it in the dust. Well, Game of Thrones, for all its many, 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 many vices, the ensemble cast is great. It is great, yeah. It is a great ensemble cast. We do such a good job with what we're given. Yeah. Um, and D Deadwood, uh, they give the cast that. Yeah. They give the cast 100%. So, yes, I would agree. Yes. Yeah. I also said the writing is the best of all time, but we also said yes just on season one. So, I'm assuming <laughs> season two. I'll say yes on season two, but where, I love the way they talk. The way they talk. The syntax is amazing. It's, yeah. Yeah. Yes. So, that, we've got that out of the way. What did you think of season two? Why was it so incredible? I hated it. <laughs> you hated it? I hated it. <laughs> I hated every moment that was shown to me. Yes. Um... I thought the plot line where where Al goes into a coma <laughs> and is like seeing his dead mother was ridiculous. <laughs> um, I, I thought the scenes where EB is in Detroit uh, trying to solve mysteries <laughs> was ridiculous. Um, and Charlie Utter joining the Scooby Gang was one step too far. Okay. Okay. That that nonsense out of the way. Yeah. I, I loved it. It was absolutely amazing. Uh, yes. need, needless to say, um, everything thematically. In terms of the characters, everything made sense. Everything made sense. Everything was perfect. Yeah. I cannot fault it one bit. No. Everything that they wanted to say in this season, they said it in the best ways possible. Yeah. Um, I don't think there's been... Uh, the, the, the whole look of the show, it's completely changed from season one. Yeah. It looks like an old like 70s film. Uh, the actors are just eating the script, they're eating the scenery. Yeah. You can tell they love doing what they do. Yeah. Um, I think it pushes the uh, themes that I kind of hinted upon in season one and just really just run with it. Yeah. Um, it takes so many unexpected turns. Yeah. Um, you know, you can you know a lot of TV shows you can guess the narrative arc yeah. that these characters are gonna go on. Deadwood, you got no idea where it's gonna go. Yeah. Honestly no idea. I mean the, 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 big, the big theme of this whole scene that links it all together is the camp becoming more civilised, becoming yep. a town, becoming part of America. Yeah. And the season basically deals with the implications of that, of the potential looming threat. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. What it means to be a citizen of somewhere is a big thing. But I also think the, the big theme of the show, and I think the reason why season two... Apart from the myriad reasons, actually, why it's better in season one, because there are several reasons why it's better. More confidence. David Milch obviously understands the, like, the, the language more, and he understands the characters more. Um, bigger budget, obviously, they can get more, like... You can see there's more, like, crowd scenes, and yeah. more, like... Um, everything just looks more authentic. Even though season one looked authentic anyway, this just feels right. Yeah. Almost like you're there. There's so many, like, amazing bits. Um, and it's just everything sort of is better, but I think the main reason is because season one is, as, so, as we said, it's so dense and it's all about becoming America. Yeah. But with a big sort of, that is what it's about. It's almost scholarly. It's like, yeah, yeah. it is sort of a it big You come show. across as dry at times. Yes. A little bit. It's almost like, this is a masterpiece. Yeah. A little, that kind yeah, of thing. But yeah. season two, I think, is more personal. It's it more works relaxed. on a bigger, yeah. Because the main thing I think is about how. It's about the point where these people realise that their lives aren't just their own. They have yeah. to soul, They have to become part of a bigger society. Yeah. And it's all about the moment where people realise they are something bigger than themselves. I mean, so certainly the, 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 the tide on that turns in um, season one. I think the, the key scene where that sense of community starts to happen is when um, the vicar who's like, he's completely losing his mind, uh, and Bullock and Seth welcome him into his... Uh, into their shop, like, you know, you've always got friends here kind of thing. And that's the first scene where you really get a sense that these characters are coming together. Yeah. But what I love about the show is that, you know, there's huge events going on in the camp. And every character's got an opinion, and a point of view, um, about yeah. how it's going to affect the camp. Um, so, like, the scenes where Al and Seth, uh, sorry, <laughs> Al and Bullock are fighting each other in the first opening episodes, you know, every character's there watching. It's almost like uh, an audience watching a play. Yeah, it's almost like a huge, it's almost like an opera kind of thing. 
Um, all these characters are coming together to watch this one scene happen. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so we really, really pushed that forward. Well, yeah, I mean, every single episode had one scene. I think every single one. In fact, I would say everyone did. Where every single character is united by something. Yeah. So, like, um, what's it called? Like, um, Requiem for a Glee. Uh, no, no, it's actually New Money, where um, Al's screaming. And every, it's like oh, every yeah, character yeah. goes through them all just to see how they react. Yeah. Or, as you said, where he gets pushed off the balcony. Or the stunning one in um, um, Advances Non-Miraculous, where Al's sort of... Um, well, no, where um, Bullock's son is dead, and yes. it shows every character reacting, and it shows Al almost falling backwards. And or even the, uh, the, the the funeral of... Uh, of, uh, of William. Of William. William! Yeah. William! Where, yeah. like, every character's there, including Al. Including, well, Al's on the balcony. Al's on the balcony, he's watching from afar. Yes. He pretends to not care, but he does really. Yeah. Uh, not my business. Yeah. Not my problem. Yes. Whereas you said, just the way that the characters change over the season is amazing. Like, yeah. episode one... It's a classic, uh, lie agreed upon, and it shows these two god characters fighting it out in the yeah. street, and it's violent and bloody. <laughs> it's amazing. And horrible, where, he, where they're like beating each other up. And then at the end of the season, uh, those, the same two people are like forming America. <laughs> they're like friends. They're like friends, and yeah. And like, um, he's sort of like, he's been to see the woman he loves at the end of the season, he's off to see his wife, and she's marrying someone else. Yeah, yeah. All, all in the space of about two weeks. Because in a normal show, yeah. The tension, but it would be easy to write the tension as big, ooh, Alma and Mrs. Bullock, are they going to have a fight? And, yeah. ooh, we're going to be bitches to each other, and nah. Yeah. But, like, it's almost like, well, the, 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 the two characters basically know yeah. the secrets of each other's do, but they accept it, and they're not, like, passive-aggressive about it, they're just, well, they are passive-aggressive, but they're, they're, there's no confrontation, they don't address it. No. Which is probably the way real people act. Yes. Um, well, it's because it realises that this camp, the pe again, it feeds into the theme of people becoming a bigger part of the community. Yeah. Sure, it'd be easy for like Mrs. Bullock to like have a fight with her or something, but it wouldn't assault any of her purposes to become a teacher, or it wouldn't help William or anything. It doesn't even, um, the fact that William dies doesn't deter her from, well, she almost leaves the camp, but ultimately, yeah. it doesn't deter her from becoming the school teacher. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And another, another theme is how tragi tragedy breeds sort of people to come together and to yes. make something of themselves. Like, almost every episode features some kind of profound tragedy. Like, uh, even sort of the like, lesser ones, like Childish Things, has Moe's yeah. Manual killing his own brother. Yeah, yeah. Which yeah. is a tragedy of its own. And obviously the last four episodes, which are probably the best block of the whole thing, are all united by William's death, which yeah. is sort of the grand tragedy of the whole so show. So from tragedy sprouts new life, yeah. which is a little heavy-handedly symbolised, but it still yeah. works, where um, before William dies, he plants a seed... Yeah, uh, I and mean, then William gets run down by uh, the by, by the uh, the horse. Yeah, um, and then after his funeral, Mrs. Bullock scrapes the dirt away and sees sprouting from the ground is a little bud. Yeah, new life continues. Yes, and we have to move on. So, to, move so on. through tragedy, we can be united through each other's pain. Yes. Even because um, throughout this whole season, Bullock and Mrs. Bullock seem to have a bit of a well, we do. It's really awkward. Yes. Um, um, you know, they basically have nothing in common. Yeah. Um, I mean, there's a great scene, I think, after William's died, where they're sat awkwardly, like, in their living room. Yeah. And they're just sat there, like, Do you like a cup of tea? <laughs> yeah. Um, and she's like, Oh, yes. Uh, but would it please you to bring me to a school teacher? Uh, to be the school teacher? Yes, it would please me very much. Yeah. Well, that's all they say. They really like they, they hold hands at yeah. the end. So, the suggestion that they're kind of going to try and make this thing work. Yes. Um, As they say, through that tragedy, everything's coming together. And for me, well, then, another huge centrepiece of the season, though, I would say, is William's death um, and uh, Al getting the gleet. Al. Well, I think there's, uh, there's sort of three. Three, there's the, yeah. there's the gleet, there's um, Walcott killing oh, the prostitutes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, because they sort of are, like, they form a loose sort of... Apart from the opening two episodes, which are standalone... It's almost like three separate mini short stories. You've got yeah. a short story about a powerful guy, the, the town leader getting the gleet and being yeah. able to stop everything. You've got Francis Walcott killing the prostitutes and then you've got the death of a small child. Yeah. They're almost like three short stories told within this wider thing. Like The only thing that really combines the episodes, apart from obviously the fact they're all set over one day after the next, is the fact that it's becoming America. Yeah, yeah. But other than that, it is sort of, 
That's why it's so weird. It's got such a weird structure because there is no unifying thing apart from this one which isn't given barely any sound. This one kind of looming threat which is invisible and in the background. Yes. Probably like how it really was. How it really was, yeah. yeah. And like even most of the characters, apart apart from Al and Seth, almost no one has any say in that. No, nope, because really that's how it idea. would be. That's how it would be, yeah. Charlie, look, I can't fall America. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely not Charlie, Utter. No, but yeah, it's just brilliant. Another way season two, I think, another like one of the big forces that makes season two so much better is actually Francis Wilcom. Oh, he is great. Yeah. What an amazing performance Garrett Dillahunt gives. Yes. So Francis Wilcom, as we know, is uh, an agent from. Uh, What's his face? George Hurst. George Hurst, the, uh, the, the, the tyrant. Millionaire. Tyrant. Millionaire. Well, back when millionaires were like the rich people who were not billionaires anymore. Yes. Um, so he actually was a, a millionaire. Um, so and he's trying to buy up gold claims in the camp and make him of his own. Almost like the way a big corporation buys up small uh, independent uh, companies and shops and providers and turns them into their own. Yeah. The Starbucks effect. Yeah. Basically. Yes. That's what he's trying to do, but he's sort of a... He's much, he's much more smart than everyone else in yeah. camp. Yeah. He's more literate and sort of verbose. Yeah. Well, definitely more verbose. Like, he gives sort of the big, wieldly, unwieldy speeches. Yeah. I, I think the two best sort of speeches are... The one where he's like, um, beyond love, beyond warmth. Do you remember that bit? Yeah, where He's yeah. walking to kill... And then he gives the one about... Um, going back, where he's like... Uh, where he's talking to Moe's before Moe's gets killed, and he's like... Um, would you also have your brother return, but with some of his fallacies that was... Do you remember that one? Yeah, Right yeah, before yeah. Moe's gets shot. So he brings sort of this element that was missing from season one. Like, season one is just these rough characters. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. he brings in sort of new colour to the thing. Speaking of new colour, he's got their first two um, black characters. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Segway. <laughs> Segways. Well, you know, but, you know, it works. You know, it works fine. That's I was wondering, you know. <laughs> Yeah, no, it's great. It's great to see it. And, yeah. Um, all the wild west races of his present. Yeah. Um, no romance to it. It's just no these are horrible characters. Yeah. It, even like the characters we're meant to like, like Al and even everyone's a little bit racist towards them. Cause yeah. It's just it's a real living, breathing community. That's it. Yeah. With yeah. so many new additions and. I also think something that's unique to Deadwood that no other show really have is that the setting allows characters to come and go as they please. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like we're talking about Sopranos. One of the main things in Sopranos that's sort of a bit annoying is when it comes to season five, they introduce like Steve Buscemi's character, and he's this big integral part of all their lives. And everyone's like, I love him. He's my <laughs> best. But it's like, well, he's not been in the show before. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Every yeah. character talks as if he's been there. Oh, and... he's a great guy. And everyone's like, well, he wasn't mentioned in the last yeah. five years. No, no, no one's ever spoken his name. Yeah. 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 We could even say that it has to be a dreamlike atmosphere of Sopranos. <laughs> yes. But, like, Deadwood can, like, anyone can come or go. Yes. And it's yeah, just got this, yeah. it's got a perfect... Like, like Charlie Attack disappears for three episodes to go and deliver the letter to, well, to, well, Bill's wife. Yeah. And he just goes, that's it. He's gone for, like, three episodes and it makes sense. Yeah. The actor probably needed a holiday. <laughs> so he runs his character out of the show for, for, for three weeks. But it works perfectly thematically because he's yeah. sort of... He is the most innocent character in the whole show. Yeah. He stands up for people who, who need it and... Uh, the he, lowdowns. He stands up for the lowdowns and his best friends are drunk. <laughs> and everything, everything like, he just defends everyone. He doesn't care. And it would make sense for him to go with this, the show's biggest tragedy and sort of the formation of America. Because people like him... Charlie Aston doesn't care. Well, it's because people like him have no place in this new America. No. It's sort of what the show is saying, in a way. Charlie. Well, it's interesting because, you know, I said at the end of season one, it's interesting how Charlie Utter gives up on being an outlaw. Yeah. Uh, and forms his own business. Like, business. I said, well, that's interesting. It's almost like, you know, that's reality what happens. All these old legends are dying and they're making a new life for themselves. And it's interesting that Charlie tries to do that. But you don't get much sense that he really enjoys it. No, in this season. By the way, this season made me completely fall in love with Charlie Utter. Yes. And I think he's a brilliant character. He is. Um, he, he's, as, as the deputy sheriff, he's, he's just perfect. Yeah. Um, he's, he's a constant source of good lines, wi wisdom, and he just doesn't fit in whatsoever. <laughs> so he tri he's an interesting character that he tried to enter the new world. He tried to enter the new America, but ultimately he can't... <laughs> Because yeah. every night he goes and sees Wild Bill's grave and he's held back by 
the past and he, yeah, he simply can't exist in this new world. Uh, I love all the scenes where uh, Charlie's like uh, getting pissed off at uh, Wilcott. Oh, like, yeah. Um, where he's like in the, um, in, the, in the hotel waiting for to be served food. E.B. was left out. E.B. Yeah. was left out, yeah. It's after Wilcott killed the prostitutes and uh, uh, Johnny Stubbs is revealed to uh, Charlie. Charlie what happened. He's like, uh, you stepped on my shoe. <laughs> That's yeah. not the amazing line. I am good at first impressions. And my first impression of you is you are a fucking cunt. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> <It's simple. laughs> yeah, well, well, that's great. I mean, uh, um, he's like, no, get off him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, no, get away. Yes. Um, that was great. I love that. I also love how um, uh, I, I get a kick out of this, like in stuff like Game of Thrones, where characters you never would expect to be meet. Yeah. Uh, While well, it comes across at times a little, well, uh, increasingly, as really forced in Game of Thrones, comes naturally in uh, Deadwood. Yeah. Because we're all in the same camp. Again, the setting, it's everything's set over like, uh, I don't know, like, a f uh, I don't know, like a few feet. <laughs> yeah. It's like Charlie Utter becomes friends with Joni Stubbs. Yeah. And then Joni Stubbs ends up hanging out with Clammy Jane. Yeah. Um, Again, no, that thematic point about change. Yeah. Jane is there to be changed by Joni so Joni can get some kind of satisfaction out of this horrible tragedy. Yeah. It's perfect, it works great. Yeah, and then you realise that there are characters who've been living 10 feet away from each other who've never met. Yeah. Um, like, uh, what's this? Uh, Al. Yeah. Al says, like, a, you know, I don't think I ever talked to her about women since she came into camp. Yeah, In Alba. reference to uh, Alba. Yeah. And it's true, oh yeah, they've never met. Yeah. And then when we do meet, it's as awkward as you expect it to be because yeah. these characters have just met. Yeah. And they both know stuff about each other. You know, they both know the stories about each other. And it's these two titans meeting. Yeah. And it's fucking awkward. It's yeah. really, really awkward. It's great. It's perfect. Yeah. Um, I love the way... Um, this is something that even, like, uh, high-end TV shows don't get right. Is that different char characters react differently to different characters. They're not always the same character. Yeah. Which is brilliant. Yeah. Um, so, Bullock, around his wife, is uptight, austere, cold... Quiet while around, I don't know, let's say Seth, uh, uh, Seth yeah. Uh, no, so Sol. Yeah. Sol, I was going around himself. Around himself. But well, he is different uh, around himself. Well, he self is. Loathing. Self loathing. Yeah. Self loathing, yeah. But there are some like um, uh, Sol, he lets all of his pent up anger and rage out. He's this, this poor Sol star, just he gets the brunt of a lot of block shit. But I like how in this season, he, Sol's not standing for it. Yeah, yeah. He's like, Fuck you, basically. <laughs> yeah. Um, I love the characterisation of Trixie as well. She's brilliant. Yeah, she completely comes into her own in this season. She is uh, learning uh, accountancy from uh, Sol. Her due lessons. Her due lessons. <laughs> uh, learning from Sol. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, it's, it's been a big Does she really care about Sol? Or is she just uh, using it so Al can, you know, get the skinny on what we're up to? Yeah. Um, I, I don't know. Yeah. I think Trixie maybe does genuinely care. Yeah. Maybe. But you see, it's brilliant. The actress plays it brilliantly. Yeah, yeah, she's great. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I love, like, all her rage. Like, trying try to get the, 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 num the numbers just ain't adding up. And she's, like, behind her, trying to do it. And she's just like, oh, fucking hell. <laughs> um, but again, characters you never would expect to be interacting, interact. And, you know, like, when Sol first goes to uh, the gym, you're like, oh, yeah, this character's never been here before. He's not stepped foot in the gym. That's crazy. Yeah. Um... It also made me grew to love the second um, bar. Oh, the so the Bella Union. The be no, 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 not the Bella Union. The, um, the oh, one, the one that the, um, the cyclist Stapleton. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So like, you've got the gem, which is where like the most popular place where most people go, and you've got Al there, and it's a huge character, and uh, then you've got the Bella Union, which is obviously one that Sion's, and we'll get into Sion a bit later because Sion is gr amazing this season, um, and. Um, yeah, so Sai tries to bring like, you know, the, the fun and games and glamour of the East Coast to Deadwood kind of thing. Yeah. I mean, I got this third one, <laughs> which is about like all the loser characters go. Like Steve the Drunk. Like Steve the Drunk and um, uh, the guy who owns the, the bicycle and... Um, he's the owner of the bicycle, man. No, yeah, yeah, sorry, he's the owner, isn't he? Yeah, the owner. Um, and you've got like... Um, there's only claim to fame, so this is where Bob Wild Bill Hickok was shot. But it's like where all the losers go. It's great, like, they don't belong in the Belly Union, they don't belong in the gym, so they're in this rat hole shit bar, like, in the edge of town. It's great, I love it. It's yeah. really, really funny. 
Um, I, I always get a big broad smile whenever they cut to, the, to these characters in this bar. Um, 